I'm on the Corolla. Uh, I've got it on a hoist so I can show you a couple of things that I've been working on. Um, there would have been a massive jump ahead in regards to progress on this and uh, the, the difference between this video and the previous video is pretty major. And to be honest, it's because I just went on a hiatus. Six months I took off. Um, I didn't know whether I wanted to do videos and stuff like that, so I um, just packed it all up and you know put it in a drawer and see if I was gonna gonna have the bug to do it again. And yes, I do. So here we are. Looks like fresh paint there. I'll show you that a little bit later. Whipped together this cross member. We still haven't cut out the floor for uh, the shifter. But this cross member, I, I, I didn't. I did it in a way so it sort of tucked the gearbox up pretty high and left left more room here for uh, an exhaust pipe or a dump pipe or anything like that. So the way it was before, well, a I wasn't. I didn't really like it. I wouldn't have had it on my car. Although it was strong. Uh, secondly, it was quite quite bulky around here, and that if you were to have a two and a half, three inch pipe underneath it, then it'll be dragging on the floor. So it's it's not finished yet. I've got to drill out these holes and um, weld a captive nut inside the chassis rail, but it works pretty good. Matt's happy with it. The, the gearbox is mated. The concentric slave is in with uh, my aluminum adapter. Unfortunately, the, the box is gonna come out because Matt didn't really want to cut into the bell housing um, to have the, the bleeder nipple up the top. But we've tried to bleed it um, with it sideways and it's just not bleeding up. So I think we're going to pull the gearbox off, um, rotate the concentric slave adapter and poke it through the top of the bell housing. So the combination used to get this T50 out of an AE71 Corolla mated up to a 5K is a flywheel out of a 7K, a clutch kit for a 1.5 to 1.6 liter Corolla, 1987 to 2000. It's a 215 millimeter clutch, concentric slave out of a Ford Mondo, and the bell housing, we're not quite sure, but we think it might be a KT. Um, not sure if it's Australian or imported. All we do know is it might actually be one of the rare ones. And it seems to fit in there quite nicely. Don't think the person that did the sump realized that the um, engine was on a slant. So we're not quite sure whether we might need to source a, um, a different angle for that uh, turbo drain because it might pull right in the corner there. So as you can see, a lot has happened in the engine bay. I've uh, painted 2K uh, solid single stage. This is that custom color I had mixed up, which is should, well, should be a match to the original white. It matches pretty good, in fact, the only difference is the new paint looks so much more shinier and fresh. Really happy with it. There's a bit of junk in there, um, but what can you expect for a garage job? I haven't even cut and polished it, so I don't think we will be. I mean, the original um, paint that was in the engine bay had runs everywhere, so it's better than that. Installed our new plaque ID plate there. Matt sourced some, I think it's garden tubing from our hardware store compared to the, uh, the original tubes that were there. They were all green and gross looking. The Bosch drive-by wire. We've got our custom plenum in wrinkle black. It's all just sitting there at the moment. Turbo manifolds installed. Brand new turbo for this. This is the Garrett Boost Club line. The GBC 22350. So it should be good for 1 litre to 1.5 litres. Matt's really stoked of having that on board. She uh, 
fits quite quite nicely. Plenty of room. Just working out the bracketry for the LS1 coils. The 5K is sitting in there. This is the fresh build. Matt took some parts to get gold zinc plated. I think they look pretty trick. See, but there's my attempts to replicate spot welds. It's where I re-seam sealed. Instead of just slapping it on, I, I applied a nice bead and then smoothed it with a bit of uh, prep sole. It's for a neater job. So the process for the engine bay was I stripped it, cleaned it, uh, unpicked panels, cleaned it again, epoxy primed the panels, welded them back on, epoxy primed the whole bay, sanded down any runs, applied smoothing filler on the welds just to clean up um, you know, the, the light grinding marks and make it look a little bit nicer because it is seen. Another layer of epoxy, let that set, went over with high build primer, cut that down and then went over with the, the 2K single stage. And here we are. I'm gonna have to do like voiceovers cause the girls are screaming in the background. <laughs> Matt bought a single 15 inch stocky off a Hyundai Elantra. He likes the idea and look of running steelies, but we need the diameter to clear the proposed brake setup. While we were at it, we removed the center and flipped it in the barrel to try and grab some extra dish. This is all trial and error of course, and the main purpose is to see how and if it'll work before pulling the trigger. Because Matt is looking up upgrade options for the front brakes, he purchased a set of front calipers off a Subaru Outback. The hub is off a KE70, so that changes the PCD to 4x114 to match the R31 diff he's looking at running. The rotors are vented 276mm late model mini discs. No, 14's definitely won't fit. 15 to this. <laughs> 15's minimum for my brakes. That
for now. Just trapping the bench. Bench bleed. <laughs>